What's up everybody? My name is Jenna and I'm here to talk about this rad bike for our little ripper. Uh, we bought a new one upgraded from his Rocky Mountain Edge 14 and I wanted to go through why this is such a rad bike. We ultimately looked at this bike kind of randomly as a last minute thing. We also looked at the Common Saw Ramones and the Rocky Mountain Edge, both all in 16 inch bikes, but went with this one because we just thought heads and tails way better than the other ones. It's such a rad bike, so I uh, wanted to introduce you to it and explain why we went with those ones and what makes this bike, as far as I'm concerned, top end, top tier bike, uh, and an excellent, excellent choice for your kid if they're serious about mountain biking even a little bit. So let's get to it. So let's get into it. So this is the Prevello Zulu 2. I apologize if it's not Prevello. I'm going to blame being Canadian on that. I think maybe it's also, I've heard Prevello? Prevello? Uh, I'm going to go with Prevello. If I'm wrong, I apologize. You can laugh at me in the comments. Anyway, this is the Zulu 2. There's a few different options for this bike. So you can get the Zulu 2, which comes as you see here. You can also get the Zulu 2 Air, which actually comes with an air fork in the front, which is super rad. Um, the two can be upgraded with the air air fork later on, so if you don't choose it right away, you can always add that on. There is also the Alpha version of the bike. It's a little bit cheaper in price. It comes with different brakes. It comes with V-brakes instead of hydraulic brakes. The top tube has a lot more of a bend to it, so a little bit lower standover and then just a little bit less aggressive geometry and weight. So this one is definitely decked out to be the mountain biker's bike, or if you think your kid's gonna get serious about biking, this one just has a bit more like trail geometry, whereas the Alpha's set up to be lighter, a little bit cheaper, um, maybe a little bit more cruisy. You could still take it on the trails, but this one's kind of set up to be that like a little bit more aggressive version. Um, one thing that I will absolutely say is I've done a ton of research and I've looked at a lot of bikes and the attention to detail and quality in this bike just speaks to how dedicated they are to making a rad kids product. And talking to the guys there just briefly, they basically just had kids, wanted to have a sick product for their own kids and then started making these bikes and are very serious about making a high-end product and that's why we went with this bike because it just it stood out to me as something that just like every little detail was thought about and I, I just thought for the price that was rad compared to a few of the other ones so let's go into kind of a few things on here um, and then I'll go through what I like about them if I have any dislikes thus far and then kind of just compare them to the common salt and the rocky um, just to kind of get you an idea of again why we chose to go with this All right so beyond that you are looking at a much slacker head tube angle and a lot more, I'm gonna say aggressive geometry to this bike than any of the other bikes that I've seen. Um, I can't attest to the, I think they're called early riders. I don't know kind of geo wise. I think they're similar maybe to their like most aggressive one, but this one, uh, the Rocky Mountain Edge, the Commonsall Ramones, and then this one here uh, had the steepest head tube angle or sorry, the slackest, sorry, slackest head tube angle at 66 degrees, whereas the other ones were significantly more steep. And that was something that was important to us because our little guy gets going pretty fast and his other bikes, he was getting like speed wobble. And so this is just gonna allow him 
from the longer wheelbase, the slacker head tube angle, just to carry more speed and not be getting that like crazy weed speed wobble as, as he's had on other bikes. So another pro to this bike is the weight. Um, in comparison to the Rocky and the Common Salt, it comes in at around the same weight as the Rocky. The Rocky is a little bit lighter, but you're also not getting the same level of components on it. You're not getting disc brakes, you're getting V-brakes. Um, this bike is a little bit bigger, slacker, and so just like those components in itself is going to make this bike a little bit heavier. It is significantly lighter than the Common Salt. So that was again another reason why we went with this bike is just that it was like that 17.1 pounds versus the common saw which was pushing 18 and then the rocky was i think around mid 16. i couldn't find an exact number on it but that's kind of what it was saying so again for what you're getting for the size of it because it is a longer slacker bike it does have that little bit more aggressive of a geo uh lets them be lower so again easier to learn on, easier to get speed on, easier to keep your balance on, all those things, still a really good weight. Another pro for me was the standover height. Considering kind of how big this bike is, the standover height is actually like in seam for this is actually quite low, especially because they give you that second seat. So if I had it crammed right now, the in seam is like 18.1 inches, I believe. And we've kind of been struggling because we have a really, really tall kid for his age. So he's just, just turned three and he's already in like five T clothes. And so we're having issues with his 14 inch bike because his knees, his legs are super long. We're getting in the way of his hands and he was having issues with that. He was getting a lot of speed wobble. So we decided to go with this bike. We were looking at the common saw, but the standover on that is quite high. And so what was happening was even though he probably was tall enough that he could have pedaled it, the standover was actually pushing it where he would have to grow into it a bit more. Whereas this one, it is a little bit big for him still, but it's still not biking season here yet because it's winter. So by the time we're getting ready to bike, he'll easily be able to fit this bike and then have all of that growth. And because they threw in that second seat that's smaller, it gives him a ton of growth. So we've decided to upgrade now so that he can grow with this bike for the next year or two, depending on how crazy he decides to continue growing. But again, just that attention to making sure the fit is right, having that lower standover was another a big reason why we bought it. Finally, the last pro for me was again, kind of a factor that played in because of how tall our kid is. Again, because he's only three, maybe he doesn't have the same athletic ability as a four or five year old just yet, or the coordination, but he has the size. But again, having that adjustability was something that was gonna be key for me. And part of the reason why we ruled out the Rocky early on, between having V brakes and um, this kind of non-adjustable seat, which is what I'm talking about here. So with this bike, it has an actual railed seat that you can adjust fore and aft. Uh, the Rocky Mountain didn't have that, it was an integrated seat post. So that one kind of got kicked out early in terms of what we were looking at buying. So this bike here and then the common sole were the only two that we found, again, that we could get in Canada where we are that actually had the adjustable seat. So again, just that little bit of adjustability that means that this bike is gonna last a lot longer and also make it easier for him to learn because we'll be able to kind of adjust those positions so that he can feel comfortable and confident. Okay, so those are all kind of reasons why we went with this bike. Honestly, when it came down to it, we were really looking between the common sole Ramones and the and the Prevello Zulu. Uh, ultimately, what made us choose this bike is just, they kind of went over and above, and it is a little bit more expensive than the Ramon, but for how much more, I just felt like there was a lot more value in this bike. Also, Prevello is really trying to make it feasible for Canadian families to get this bike, so they took care of duties for us, so we didn't have to worry about that. And they also created a Canadian site so that we're roughly paying the same as what the Americans are, to try and get us, uh, like us Canadians, have access to these awesome bikes. So that again was also a selling feature. That and just, they're this small kind of like family owned business. And I just really loved the vibe where they, you know, answered my questions right away. We're super social, um, super friendly, super stoked on biking. And I just, I always want to support companies like that.
So again, it came down kind of the common saw and this bike, and we narrowed it down to the common saw and this bike because of the hydraulic disc brakes, the adjustability in the seat, kind of the slacker geometry, um, and just overall look too. And then we ultimately went with this bike. Again, it was slightly more. I think it kind of ended up being maybe around like 50 bucks more. In my mind, it was worth it for the additions of what they threw or what they've done here. So with the disc brakes, the seats, the easy levers, and just the high quality parts that they chose, the three piece cranks. Um, we went with this bike because it had the lower standover where they sent two seats that allowed us to have a ton of growth allowed us to get him into it right away. And the weight, again, that weight difference, I just like, you know, whether it's a half a pound, a pound, that's just a lot for when you're looking at someone who's 35 pounds, you know, a half a pound is significant, right? So we went with that bike for that, for that reason. When I got it, I was certain we made the right choice. It just, again, all of the attention to detail, the colors, the little additions, you know, the two seat posts, the internally eroded cable here, all of it just speaks to a high quality product where they looked at every little element and decided to make it top notch. So hands down, super happy with this product. Uh, would I buy it again? Absolutely. Um, once our sun gets riding on it a bit more, once the snow fully melts, I'll get another review kind of how it's holding up and if there's been any issues with it. But as it stands right now, he's been having it on his little bike trainer that we have so he can pedal. Got the back prop propped up a bit so he watches a movie sometimes and pedals it and he loves it. But hands down, the look of it, the adaptability, the quality of the product, to me it's a 10 out of 10. They did awesome. If anyone's thinking about buying this bike, do it. Two thumbs way up.